I messed up, everybody. I forgot to turn our voices on. Okay, welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday Night Show, All Things Fantasy Grounds Talk Show. Before we begin this punk, uh, I would like to remind everybody that the All Things Fantasy Grounds Talk Show is meant to teach and help, but the opinions stated by the three of us on the show tonight are not the opinions of SmiteWorks USA LLC or Fantasy Grounds. So just keep that in mind, everybody. Uh, before we get to our guest, let me say hello to uh, one of my co-hosts. The one I'm going to say hello to is the one that's here. The other one is not here tonight. Uh, hi, Theory. How are you? Hi. Uh, I'm good. I um, I don't know if Rob did it, but I woke up from a nap recently, so I feel refreshed. Uh, yes. How are you doing, Rob? I'm doing great. Thank you. I didn't have a nap immediately prior to the show, but I my sleep schedule's so off. I did sleep some earlier today, though, so I'm also refreshed. Um. Great. Uh, uh, just for everyone's curiosity, Robin had to drive her brother to the airport, I think was the excuse she gave us. I, I don't know what she Yeah, said. something about being an Uber taxi driver, I don't know. Yeah, and something about having, like, family members that ask her to do favors, and I don't know what, I don't know anything about that. I don't have any family members. Anyway, <laughs> so we are here tonight. Uh, actually, let me go to the to the web page itself and and show this uh we're here tonight with mr chris taylor also known as gun bunny foo foo and he is the person who did the particular module that we're going to be going over tonight and of course we'll be giving away a copy of it uh that i just bought prior to the show so hi gun bunny how are you i'm doing well thank you for having me on the show excellent uh welcome to the show so i do not play savage worlds and neither does furied fate but we do have the savage worlds uh desktop open here with the module loaded and for those of you that know uh you probably what i'm about to say but for those of you that either haven't played savage worlds or don't play it regularly there is an extension that we loaded that comes with that is also the is it the setting or the, the is it the rift setting extension what would you call it Yes, it's the uh, Rift setting extension. It's okay. uh, themed by Mortani, and uh, some of the, the code was done by Akale, who's the developer of the Savage Worlds rule set on Fantasy Grounds. Okay, great. So uh, we have that uh, showing to the uh, to the stream right now. And if you would like to, Gun Bunny, just uh, you tell me what to click on, and I'll do it, and you can uh, showcase what you want, and we'll we'll go through this and see how awesome it is. Well, we'll just go through a, a, a kind of a refresher for Savage Worlds folks out there, or for those that don't know Savage Worlds, kind of an introduction. Okay. Um, Savage Worlds is a is another uh, type of role playing game. It's a very simple role playing game compared to like your D and D three point five, D and D four, D and D five. It's uh, much more simple. You've got target numbers of four. Um, it uses every dice but the D twenty, and except for one instance. Um, but it's it's quite easy, quite a simple system. It's it takes about five minutes to learn, and once you're on it, you're you're good to go. Cool, yeah. And I have, even though I don't play it regularly, and I've never DM'd it, I have played a couple games, so I know about the, I know what the bennies are, and I know what uh, exploding dice is, and I know that you have a um, a number that you're shooting for. Which is which is four, as you said, but you can you can have d fours, d sixes, d eights, d tens as your starting point, depending on how you rank all your uh you know your stats in the character sheet and everything. So and it, it's it is a fun system. I I really do uh, I do like it. I don't I don't play it not because I don't like it because I do like it. It's just you know you got to pick your battles with streams and games, and I I just haven't added that to you know my my normal repertoire, but um. But yeah, so and some of you watching, I'm assuming I played Savage Worlds, so you know what's up. Um, what else? Um, so the the rifts for Savage World is is based upon um, Palladium's rifts, which I think uh, probably everybody knows about. Uh, um, when you say everybody, I guess we can include everybody except me. 
Okay. But so is that uh, it, I can, can I Google that and show people Palladium's riffs? Yes, it's it's Palladium, Palladium Books Online is the uh, I think it's the website. Um, riffs is set in a in a future uh, world, uh, not not unlike our own, but set in the future. Um, what has happened is mankind has progressed through this golden age of of you know technology and medical things. It just it's everything's perfect. And then suddenly somebody pushes a button somewhere. They don't know what happens. Uh, uh, the uh, Yellowstone uh, volcano blows. Uh, oh, suddenly man. there's yeah, and it just it just the subsequent you know extinction of mass extinction of life brings ley lines back into the world. Magic flows back into the world, and where these these ley lines crisscross across you know the world, where they cross is is known as these nexuses. And along these nexuses, these rifts to, or these portals to other dimensions open up. Demons flood out and just you know for the next three hundred years just demolish uh, mankind. Yeah. Yep. And I've, I've played, I think I've played Savage Worlds, just its own, like just the basic uh, RPG, but I definitely have played a couple times. Um, oh, uh, Zero, what's it called? Zero 2.0. Oh, what is it called? Something Zero 2.0. But it's another, it's another Savage Worlds setting. Uh, someone will know what I'm talking about, <laughs> but we we played that, and what was interesting about that to me was the the dungeon master that ran that game set it in Spokane, Washington, which is where I live. So it was pretty cool to play. interface zero. Thank you, Bofrin. So I, I played that Savage Worlds game, and I was a, we were able to to do it, you know, in the location where we are in in real life. So that was kind of cool. I do something similar. I run a number of games, but uh, I live in the Midwest. I'm very familiar with the town that I live in and work in. So therefore I kind of localized my game to that and said, it, you know, 300 years in the future, some, some modern, you know, uh, establishments that would have survived through the dark ages that, that spawned from the refs and, and whatnot. Yeah. But it, it, it certainly helps for, for people to understand, especially if you've got tabletop players from that area that you're playing in, they understand, okay, yeah, I know where that is. Right, it's a lot. It's a lot more. Um, it's a lot more mentally tactile. To, you know, you can grab onto because you've you've either driven by or been in buildings that you're talking about and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Absolutely, yes, yes, yes. All right, so now this is its own setting, uh, and this is obviously the equivalent of the what the player's handbook. This is the 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 player's guide for Tomorrow Legion. Um, so what what can we say about it? I'm assuming this is um, a good place to start. The the, uh, the uh, it's got a reference manual and and it's uh, like uh, your D and Ds and things like that. It's it's got the entire rules, the entire book in in reference manual format. So um, it gives you kind of a background on to what's happened. Uh, forward by I think Kevin uh, from uh, Platinum Books, um, but it it contains everything that you would have if you would go purchase the actual book you know from right. like amazon or, or whatnot cool oh man um, oh yeah see i i get crazy with the artwork i just love i just love looking at the artwork <laughs> the artwork is fantastic uh they've done a wonderful job with the artwork yeah i'm the guy who uh you know how people say or they used to say i read playboy for the articles no no i was there for the artwork if you guys know what I'm saying out there in the internet <laughs> land. Yeah, I was looking at the pictures. <laughs> I did read the articles, though. Um, all right, so – and and it, this is strictly just the rule book, character creation, setting setting stuff, and, and you know, uh, Cyanex and magic. But there's no uh, – or does it have an example, like, scenario, or is it just the rules? It is just the rules. Okay. Um, there are a number of books that have came out afterwards that have, uh, you know, uh, what they call plot point campaigns, or which are mini campaigns um, for the setting. Um, but yeah, the actual Tomorrow Legion Player's Guide is just the, the player's guide. It, it contains just the rules needed to run the game. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, anything in particular you want to showcase? Like, um, I mean, I'm just kind of cycling through pages here. 
but you can tell right. me yeah go to a certain um, place or yeah the the we, this rift contains a couple of unique things at least the savage rift version of it does uh, things are broken down into what they call frameworks so you can think of frameworks as kind of character class in D D. um if you if you look upon the right hand side of the uh your table there where it says frameworks if you scroll down just a little bit right there frameworks those represent all the kind of classes that that uh that uh, you can play in in savage riffs oh cool okay so we have the first one is burster just by alphabetically right yep bursters are psionic uh, uh beings um who have abilities to concerning fire nice wow this uh, is a lot of information for for character yeah here's the abilities yeah so that's yep, pretty and... sweet yeah, everything that, that, you know, I tried to, when I made this, I tried to make sure that everything that everybody would need to play a click, uh, the, the class or the iconic framework is what they're called, is available right there. Just, you know, you click it and it's all the information's right there. Cool. So here's, yeah, here's the uh, fire example, your, your fire hands and hair and probably yeah, other yeah. things. If you get mad, maybe your whole body. Uh... Yes, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Cool. So next one is Combat Cyborg. That seems pretty self-explanatory by the name of it. Absolutely, it is a it is a you know heavy-duty combat robot that likes to kill. Um, they're they're designed to take a tremendous amount of punishment and dish it out in return. Sweet. That's already my favorite. I mean, we've only looked at two, but that's the one I like so far. Uh, crazy. <laughs> There's just a class okay. called Crazy. <laughs> Um, the crazy is during the, 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 the height of the, the humanity's technological golden age, they were able to kind of uh, manipulate the human mind to, to bring about psionics. And the crazy is, is a representation of that. Um, they, they're, they're psionic creatures or psionic, psionic people um, that have mental disorders based upon their psionics. Uh, that that uh, that comes about because of their psionics. So they uh, when they when they fight, they go berserk. They they become immune to fear almost. Uh, they can dish out punishments. They're fast, uh, faster th than humans can can normally be. Uh, they're hard to hit um, because they're so twitchy. Um, yeah. It's it's, <laughs> it's it's really an interesting character uh, concept. Cool. And uh, there was a great question in the chat. Tom Knapp wanted to know: Is this a, um, is this a setting or a rule set? And no, you must have the Savage Worlds uh, basic rule set in order to run this. Think of this as, think of this as like the player's handbook, but you need the five E rule set. So yeah, you need to. And I believe if you don't have the Savage Worlds rule set, it's like ten bucks. It's not. It's not that much. Yeah, it's it's not not hateful at all to buy. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Cyber Knight. Um, Cyber Knight is the futuristic version of the Paladin. You could think of it as um, they can uh, they 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 are psionic themselves as well. They can generate these that sword that you see in her hand. That is a a psionic manifestation of her will, and they are incredibly sharp and, and they are the paladins of the future. Um, nice. They take down demons and 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 vampires and things like that with the greatest of ease. Sweet. Yep, I like that one too. Uh, Dragon Hatchling, that seems pretty obvious. Look at this. So that's not even a humanoid. That's a that's a full on dragon. You can play in rifts. You can play a dragon. Hey everybody! <laughs> and I gave you the link. Yeah. Go get it. Uh, they, that's uh, awesome. It's a uh, it's a magical creature. It's also a psionic creature. Um, and it's a full on dragon, dragon breath. They've got a few different types in the subsequent books, but the the flame wind dragon that you're looking at is your classic red dragon of of D and D fame. And does it like when you go gaining a lot of experience and stuff? Do you grow and get bigger and become what would the equivalent of be like a an old an old dragon and an ancient dragon and all that? Does that happen? Um, absolutely. You can take, uh, there are edges, uh, specific edges are kind of like feats in D&D &D, yeah. um, that allow you to increase size and increase your damage output and, and you know, be able to take abilities like teleportation and, and things like that. So it's, it's certainly as you get older, being a dragon hatchling, you, you can 
by the cheer bits, edges that cheer bits on the stream. To, Thanks for the cheer to, bits. Uh, become more powerful. Cool, awesome. Clem forty five. Thank you for the cheer bits. Uh, thank you so much. Cheer bits, bit boss. Uh, okay. After the dragon is glitter boy. <laughs> Look at the, the glitter. The, so I did not expect <laughs> from the name of it. I did not expect to see this graphic. That is not what. I, that's all. Look at the size of this machine gun or whatever he has. That that yeah, is really that is the RG fourteen boom gun. Uh, that is a that is the world's most devastating uh, armament right there. Uh, the Glare Boy is a ten foot, ten and a half foot tall suit of power armor. Weighs one point two tons, and and is outfitted with that particular weapon. And that weapon is devastating. Wow, it looks like it. I don't even want to come any. It's just a glitter so, gun fury that comes out of the shoots glitter out of the top exactly. right here. Yeah. So Spencer, uh, to answer your question, why uh, doesn't everyone just play dragons? It, because we want to be glitter boys, apparently. Right. That's right. Until yeah, wait till you see them all because that's fantastic. I love it. I just love his. I don't even care about anything except that giant thing. The thing is, as big as he is, this weapon is. If you put it standing up, it would probably be like eight feet tall. That's crazy. It, it's basically yep. a cloud sword from Final Fantasy VII. Cool. Absolutely. Uh, um, this, the juicer. Yeah, the juicer. Uh, the juicer is a chemically enhanced super soldier. Um, much like the crazy, they have abilities that are superhuman. Um, they move fast, uh, almost three times faster than than a normal human would. Um, they dodge bullets. They dodge lasers. Um, they can jump. They can roll. They can. They can do everything. Um, However, the, the thing with the juicer is this chemical cocktail in them, the more they use it to, to fuel their superhuman powers, uh, the, the closer it, it, it goes to burning them out and they die. Yeah, that's not good. So, yep, totally. That's the equivalent of the battery-powered car. <laughs> it's awesome until Absolutely. you run out or, or use too much. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, Leyline Walker. Let's get this picture. The Leyline Walker is your your classic D and D wizard. Um, as I mentioned before, ley lines are are uh, phenomena of magic that crisscross the earth, and the Leyline Walker is the master of those. They can tap those leyline those ley lines for power. Um, they normally don't need it as far as when they're moving between ley lines, they have their own source of power. But once they get introduced to if they cast their magic on a ley line, uh, their their results are just spectacular. Um, they become gods. Cool. Uh, it seems the artist maybe had a a, a phallic uh, situation here, but uh, we, we don't kink shame. Robin doesn't allow us to kink shame, so it's all perfectly fine, everybody. <laughs> um, it's a belt, sir. It's a sash. I, I don't it's, see. That's just you. It's just it's, what you're thinking. It's a sash and a belt, so it's a shelt. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what you're saying to me. Uh, speaking about the artwork, who did the artwork? Um, we can I find out. Really, yeah, it's it's. If you look at the the credits, it should be right there. There's a number of people that that are responsible for the interior artwork. Here's the. Uh, so there's a lot. It seems though that the character uh, ones we've been looking at have all been signed by the same. Uh, let's see if we can figure it out. Uh, oh, maybe not, because uh, I wanted to say they all had that. Uh, I'll find one that has the signature in the bottom. Oh, and now, now none of them do, of course. We, <laughs> we definitely looked at one that, that did. Um, well hidden. What the hell? I, I swear I, I swear I was on either. It was this. It was. Uh, there it is. And it, that's either. Like an R? An R and an F. -R. So let's look at the names. Um, could that have I'm been... I'm sorry, I'm just dropping the whole character show off. No, no, we'll go back oh, to no, it. Good. Maybe oh, Aaron, Aaron, Riley. Aaron Riley. Yeah, so the guy yeah. that did the cover also did a couple of these that I thought I was seeing on everyone, which I wasn't not. So there's many artists there, everybody, but you can check it out. Uh, okay, let's go back to right. where we... The Mars. All which... right, the Mars are your average Joes in, in the future. There, it stands for mercenaries, um... I can't remember the second uh, artists, the rogues, and scholars. Um, adventurers. Yeah. Your, yeah, adventurers. Yes, adventurers. Yeah. Um, they are the the normal people that don't have any superpowers or anything like that, but 
in in Savage Worlds, um, they actually start at a higher experience level by default. So in order to sort of balance, because I mean, if you can imagine playing a normal character or a normal person with a juicer, you can realize the power creep there is just the the, the power disparity is 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 unreal. Um, and they they offset that by allowing the the normal uh, character to come in at a higher level. Yeah, cool. Um, and there there's no picture because it's a it's an every it's an every man, so it's just uh, yes, ab- absolutely. And had, down here they had the 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 speeder or the speedster. Yeah, the, in, yeah, speedster. That's a hover bike. <laughs> the picture in the reference manual is bigger than this one. That's funny. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Mind Melter, yes. Uh, Mind Melter is a psionic uh, being as well. Um, they are masters of of psionics, whereas the Leyline Walker is a master of magic. Um, the the Mind Melter is is a master of psionics. Okay. Uh, they too can can uh, uh, have a, a blade, a side blade that they can uh, manifest. Um, but their powers are all have to do with uh, getting into people's heads and, and manipulating people's like people's uh, thoughts and, and things like that. Very good. Uh, the mystic. Let's get that pick. Oh yeah, she's she just looks uh, not friendly. <laughs> the uh, mystic is a, is is an iconic framework that's kind of uh, they're best described as a as a cleric on steroids. They're they're part angels usually, and they have abilities. They are both psionic and uh, holy uh, creatures. Um, they, they, they can cast, uh, if you're a demon, you want to stay the hell away from a, a mystic because they can fry your ass in just a few bits. Um, they're that powerful, uh, when it comes to the, the dark, you know, demons and, and vampires and things like that. Nice. I like that. <laughs> Techno wizard. Uh, the Techno Wizard is 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 another class of wizard. They're not as powerful magically as the Leyline Walker, but what they what they what they lack in magical ability, they make up for in utility. Um, they can create items, magical items, kind of on the fly, that do that mimic certain effects, and they're very very utilitarian class. Very nice. So now this is a, another. Uh, this is not a class or not a framework, but talking about uh, frameworks, right. upgrades, and stuff. Yes, here. yeah, right. Uh, the techno wizards—they have a whole list of of things that they can do, um, gear upgrades, and they can add powers to to weapons and to and to armor and to, to magical I- or to regular items to make them magical. Um, and that's the uh, the the rules concerning that. Okay. Now, is this DBs and mutants? Can you tell us? Is are these other frameworks, or is this more of like NPC stuff? Uh, DBs and mutants are oh, our it's race. the races. Oh, okay. Yeah. So now um, this is the race rather than the uh, framework. Okay. Right. DB stands for dimensional being, and uh, those are the creatures that come through the rifts that don't want to kill man uh, mankind. Um, in some instances, uh, uh, for example, an elf would be a DB. Um, a dwarf's a DB. Um, gotcha. Gnomes are DBs. Um, they've, there are all sorts of different uh, DBs out there. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Okay, so we've got um, how many different ones? We've got Alara or Altera. Is that a T? Yep, uh, it's a T. It, yeah, it's it a T. Okay, and then we've got uh, Denor. Yeah, Denor. Yeah, don't put the apostrophe in the name of the oh my god fantasy grounds. Uh, Absolutely, <laughs> I know. Uh, dog boy, loving it. I want to be a dog boy, glitter boy. Already, this is uh, what you, I want. You, to you certainly can. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, this one is called. I'm gonna say Finodi. Finodi, okay. Yeah, Finodi. Yeah, those are the uh, plant people. Plant people. Okay. It's a it's a plant. Oh yeah, it's a plant. It's, it's, it's yeah, not good for not good for kissing, I would imagine. But whatever, you work it out. <laughs> it, I mean, for a second, I thought it was kind of like a I don't know some sort of rodent-looking creature. <laughs> and then Gracktooth. Yep. 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 Six pack, uh, eight pack. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mm, we'll call it six. 
and they are very physically oriented, much uh, as much as you can be. And this one is Lin's Real. Lin's Real. Um, at least that's what I I pronounce it as. Um, they are four armed uh, bird creatures um, that are are good in in in. You can consider it good in alignment or good in nature. Got it. And again, let's just focus here. All right. Um. Oh, by the way, I didn't tell you, Chris. Uh, the show's a little juvenile because I'm in charge. <laughs> Just so you know. Uh, no worries. No worries. Uh, Psy Stalker. Uh, this I like. Um, Psy Stalker is a race of of humanoid or DB that actually takes the, its sustenance from from uh, people's inherent their their life force, pretty much. They're kind of almost vampiric in nature. Yeah, I knew I liked it. Very good. Quick flex seems the most like a human, maybe. Yeah, they're they're the most human like of of the DBs that are presented in the uh, Tomorrow Legion Players Guide. They are very very quick, as their name indicates. Um, very dexterous, very agile, and uh, yeah, they're uh, they they make good juicers. Nice. And then the next one is a Simvan. Yep, Simban Monster Rider. Um, they are a race of DBs that that have a unique bond with with uh, mounts. Uh, they've got all sorts of different mounts that they have, um, like you know, a Rhino Buffalo that they ride and in, into battle and things like that. But they they share that they, they have a psionic bond with their mounts. Okay, cool. And then the last one I think is Trimador. Yep, the Trimador are a race of uh, DBs that are very scientifically oriented, scientifically in nature, I guess. Um, they're, they're very good scientists. Nice. And then as we go on past the DBs, uh, I'm assuming you like abilities, attributes, skills, hindrances, and edges all work the same way. I mean, they're you know those are basic. Um, Savage Worlds things, and then I'm assuming these are just new right. new variances on top of that, and maybe some some ones that are used uh, repeated. Maybe I don't know, but I'm assuming that's what's happening, right? Um, they a lot of that is they've had to make a course. Uh, Rifts is best described as Savage Worlds turned up to eleven, so they've had to make some concessions to make some changes to the base uh, rules for Savage Worlds in order to make it the the kind of gonzo over the top setting that it is. I got is. it. Okay. This one goes to 11, doesn't it? Um okay, so I I don't think we want to we we don't need to unless you want to we can nope, go through these nope, but Nope, nope. But, uh, that's the same the same uh you know like this was if you're if you're making an analogous statement to 5E compared to Savage Worlds this was the classes, and then this was the races, and but all of the you know all of the attributes, skills, hindrances, and ed and edges are all going to be based the same way as basic Savage Worlds, just set for this setting for the Rift setting. That's correct. And then new gear. Uh, right, a lot of gear. It's a very gear-heavy setting. Which I'm assuming, yeah, uh, the body armor, all kinds of. <laughs> I'm a medic. Don't shoot me. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> and then power armor. Yeah, there's all different kinds of armors. I remember from when I did play. Um, yep, all sorts of different armors, all sorts of robot armors, um, all sorts of close weapons. combat weapons. Uh, see if there's any. Yep, there's various tables that go with that, obviously. Let's see if we can get any. Yeah, if you. Cybernetics and stuff. Uh, yeah, but, I don't know that there's pictures in there. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, okay. in that I can't remember there being pictures in the gear section, or at least that many. Here is... Oh, that is a Mountaineer ATV. I like it. There's technical difficulties, like what happened to your... Uh, you know, the, 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 the car blew up. What happened to it? I love it. I love all Right, absolutely. Detail. It's it's a... Uh, it, being a technological sort of setting, um, things happen to, to your technological items on a critical failure. Um, they may blow up, they may stop working, whatever. And that, that table gotcha. there covers that. Cool. And then, um, there's backgrounds. Yep. Uh, there are, there are a number of are what they call arcane backgrounds in Savage Worlds. Um, that being magic, uh, psionics, 
uh, techno wizardry and miracles uh, being, you know, sort of like the the cleric uh, powers. Um. Yeah. So pretty comprehensive. I mean, it's a full, it's a full player's guide for a new thing, aside from you know basic Savage Worlds, and uh, I th I think it's fourteen. So uh, fourteen ninety nine. Yeah. Let me go back to uh, and I put the link before I put the link again, everybody, and we are gonna give one of these away to a lucky person tonight but yeah 14.99 so really good because think of it as like the player's handbook i believe is for 5e is 29.99 so it's it's a it's a really good price works of course in unity and classic both right um and it's got everything you need and then i think down here there's even notes about where did i see it Na narrative hooks so you can right. you, you don't even really need to buy an adventure if you don't want to you can you can start your own sort of home home play with you know you've got what you it'd be the same thing as buying the player's handbook for 5e you could still just play right away you don't really need anything else right the uh the narrative hooks help with your character background um the, because it's such a i mean the the platinum setting the rift setting encompass like 40 books and we're talking 40 you know 100 plus page books so there's a lot of information that they've had to, to pull from it. And that's kind of just, you know, you, you go in there, hit a button, and this is your kind of your background, what happened and where you're from. Uh, one of the things that, that Savage Rifts has that, uh, that I'm not aware of any other uh, settings, Savage World settings has, is what they call the hero's journey. And each iconic framework gets a, a role, kind of like magical items, or, or it's, it's a table of special items be they abilities or, or edges or things like that. And you can pick it, your role, see what you get, and you add that to your character sheet. So it kind of customizes your character even more. Got it. Okay. So uh, there was a question in the chat, does it have any NPCs? And the answer is no, because, again, this is this is heavy focus on character creation. And right. uh, not, not, you know, it's not like a monster manual or anything like that. You'd have to get a, a separate... I, I am working on the uh, the NPC or the monster manual they call it uh, Savage Foes of North America. Um, I want to say that's like a 150 page book of nothing but Savage Worlds stats for uh, Rifts Tomorrow Legion. Oh wow! Is that and you're that's currently in production? Yeah, that's currently in production. Cool, nice. Well, so that's coming coming up too. Uh, they've got a GM's handbook as well. Uh, that's a little further down the line but they've got they, like i said they've got i think a total of seven books that i'm converting uh over for this project and is this the first one that is indeed the first one yes okay so if we go look up riffs it's just going to show this one uh, the other ones are or oh, yep so, on the way and this, yep. this has only been released since a couple weeks ago so get in on right. it everybody <laughs> i encourage everybody to it, it's been around. The, the first uh, Rifts came out for Savage Worlds in 2016, um, and it came out for the Savage Worlds uh, Deluxe version. Yeah. Um, but recently, Savage Worlds went from Deluxe to uh, Adventures Edition, and so they had to retool everything for that. They had a tremendously successful Kickstarter, and that brought in hundreds of thousands of dollars, and they retooled everything and released additional books for it. Uh, addition, uh, at the beginning, they were just the three books. Got it. Yeah, so there you go, everybody. Um, any questions? Type them in the chat. And anything, anything uh, you think we missed, or anything that's important to cover that we didn't cover in in here so far? Not really. I mean, it's a, just a Pretty Gonzo much, yeah. setting. It's 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 a fun setting to run, a uh, fun setting to play in. Um, I I highly recommend. It. I mean, try it out at least to, to yeah. see what you do. With uh, it. What I really like what you said about it that spoke to me anyway is like the elevator pitch that you like the one sentence description where you said it's just savage worlds turned up to 11. I think that, that, I mean, just if you, if so, if nobody knew anything, but they kind of, Oh, I know what savage worlds is. I've heard of that. You could just say that to them and be, they'd be like, Oh, okay. So it's extra hard, extra fast, extra tall, extra big. You know, and all that. Absolutely. Stuff. It, it's just larger than life. All right. Well, I'm going to give away a copy of this. So let's do it. Let us do it, everybody.
go to the raffle here. Word raffle. Um, the item that I'm going to give away is the Fantasy Grounds module. And it's not it's not just called Roach. You have to say the whole name, but I'm just going to say that in the in the chat here. And I'm going to make everybody learn how to spell your screen name if they want to win the prize. So, oh, no. ex Don't exclamation, oh. gun bunny foo foo, everybody. And if you type that in the chat, exclamation point, gun bunny foo foo, and it's spelled right there for you. You can just copy and paste if you want. But then I will draw a winner, and I will give them my copy that I just purchased prior to the show. Uh, did I spell it right? Yeah, I think I did. I think I did. Let me check. Did I spell it wrong? Oh my god, that would be... Nope, I spelled it right. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'll give away my copy that I just bought to a lucky winner, and then if you guys are interested in purchasing a copy yourself in order to support Chris Taylor uh, and the Savage Worlds community at large, there's the link for that. It is available also on Steam for those of you that uh, buy your, um, you know, buy your Fantasy Grounds modules on Steam. You can just search for that. I don't, I don't do that myself, but I know, I know someone who does. No names, Robin. Buys all of her stuff through Steam. Um, and there you go. And yeah, like I said, it just came out September 29th, so not even. Uh, uh, take a, a look at a couple of screenshots. Oh, that picture. This. Oh, a rift. That's a rift, everybody. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what a rift looks like. I'm not totally dumb. I know what a rift looks like when it looks... Again, it's <laughs> just, uh, you know... Are, are you able to, like, close a rift, or is that something that's not possible? Um, it is possible in the platinum rules. I'm not sure if it's possible in the the uh, the Savage Rift rules. I know it, if it is, it's supposed to be very, very hard to do. Um, I can't remember if the ley lines oh, yeah, I, do I it. Imagine. I, I think it may be like uh, heroic level uh, power or abilities that they can they can purchase. Holy shit! <laughs> this looks like to me. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know what uh... you yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Fury. Right away, you knew what I was talking about. No, no, I'm not. Uh, so Shadzar has a question. Um, Vagina. So is Gladium dead now oh, or well, is uh, savage worlds rifts replace it forever um no the uh the platinum rifts is still going strong it's just that uh they 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 saw the need to they saw the ability and the opportunity to spread their their uh intellectual property to another system and i you know it it you know that's what it, they've done so yeah because it's still uh, now if you go here the palladium I don't see anywhere. Oh no, I don't see anywhere here where they tell you go to Fantasy Grounds and buy it. I don't. Maybe they. They're not. Yeah, no, that. it's it's totally separate separate uh, intellectual properties. Um, the oh, Savage you said Rift, based on right. You did say that. Yeah, I did say it. Yeah, it's it's based on. So, it. like right. I said, there's hundreds of books for uh, Palladium uh, Rifts, uh, or at least it seems like that. There's there at least forty. Cool. All right, here we go, everybody. The winner of the Fantasy Grounds module for Rifts the Tomorrow Legion Player Guide is... No, that's not what I meant. I almost messed up, everybody. Draw a winner. Diablo Bob. There you go. Diablo Bob is the winner. You know what to do, Diablo Bob. I think I know what to do. Your your Fantasy Grounds name is just Diablo Bob, right? I can award it to you right now. You want to see it? You Congratulations. Want to see it happen? You want to see it happen? Here's, here's what we're going to do. Go to Order History. I'm going to find it. And where is, how would I do that? This one? That, there it is. What is this? I don't know what this is. Wait a minute, hold on, what is this? I'm just, oh, Toma Beast, right, yeah. All right, let's just calm down, everybody, Toma Beast. It says zero because I kickstarted it, that's why. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to gift this to Diablo Bob right now. Gift order. Diablo Bob. It'll tell me if it's wrong. Confirmed. Diablo. I always spell I always spell that wrong, so let's see if it works. Your gift was successfully delivered. Now, here's the cool thing. I still have it. 
<laughs> but the second I close Fantasy Grounds down, or no, not the second I close it down, but the next time I update, it's gone. It's gone. I don't have it anymore. So I just never update and I keep it and I scam the system. That's how you do it, everybody. You just don't ever buy anything ever again and never update your Fantasy Grounds. That's how you can do it. <laughs> Uh, very good. All right. Well, so I, I'm glad you came. I, I'm, I'm, I'm always interested. You know, everybody teases me about how Rob Dewey, you can't talk to him about anything but 5e, which is generally true. But I'm always interested to look at um, different, different RPGs. And we, uh, in the course of our, this is our 136 episodes. I'd say we've had at least a half a dozen people come on with stuff that I didn't didn't have any interest in but mostly what happens is what happened to me today which is i get all excited about something new so that's cool that you uh especially were, the artwork especially the artwork yeah that's right uh because as you know i i don't i i can't read that's i just i don't really admit that very much but i'm illiterate so i just have to look at the pictures um, just look at the pictures absolutely. just look at the pictures that's how you do it and looking at the pictures in playboy all those years and i'm still single all right um, any more questions from the chat? Did we miss anything? I don't think so. I think we got them all. Make your glitter boy, Rob. Yeah, that's right. That's what I'm going to do. Make my glitter boy. All right. Very good. Well, so, um, for those of you that are, uh, waiting for the games after the show, like we do on Sundays, we are going to do that. We do have a new, um, jackbox pack number seven which just came out on tuesday so we're going to play some some new games as far as upcoming shows we do not have anything scheduled for next week so i can't tell you what it'll be what i can tell you is that there will be something there i just don't know what it is yet um and then the following week, though, November 1st, we are going to have uh, John Nelson, John G, Jonathan G. Nelson from AAW Games here talking about Rise of the Drow, Collector's Edition, which is available on Fantasy Grounds for, I think, 60 bucks. I, I converted that. And he is going to give away at least one of those and more, he said. So he's going he's gonna to bring some other prizes with him. And then we've got to fill in the schedule. Of course, we'll be doing Tasha's Cauldron of Everything the Sunday after it comes out. I think it comes out on the 17th, but the following Sunday is the 22nd, so we'll do it then. And I will, of course, give a copy of that away, as I always do. And then we are taking January off, and then we're going to have the third the third anniversary um, on Valentine's Day. Most likely I'll be here by myself. I don't know if married women are going to join me for that show on Valentine's Day. Oh, first of all, Robin doesn't get <laughs> boom well I, I i mean i will because it's a sunday and i have work the next day so you know oh there you go okay i told robin she has to c come to the show and then go out to dinner after or whatever i don't know she lives in central time zone so it might not work but anyway uh and so there is a i think do i have a link for it that's uh, not that i forget what the link is there's there's a command Oh, let me just find it. Does any somebody in the chat? It's idea. There you go. Yeah, so I Theory got it. Fate knows what it is. If you do have an idea, if you have something you want us to do on the show, um, go to that link. It's the it's it's the idea informer, the same as it is for regular fantasy grounds. Only we set one up for this show, so you guys can go there. And if you type an idea there, uh, Robin and Fury and I will all get emails and we'll see what we can do about it. Uh, so I guess that's it now. Uh, Chris, do you want to let anybody, do you want to let the audience know both here on Twitch and on YouTube that will be watching later? Like if they want to follow you on social media or any of your websites or any of your personal the stuff, best you, way to give stalk you. <laughs> best way to stalk you at your home. Yeah. Give your personal address. Yeah. I have no social media really. I, I, you know, <laughs> I deal with uh, social media <laughs> at uh, my workplace. And so Therefore, I don't uh, don't carry a lot of social media. Yeah. Or... So every time somebody tells me that, I think they're the smartest person in the world. If I I decided a long time ago, like about three or four years ago, if I didn't have my job, well, if I didn't have my DMs Guild business, and if I didn't have my, um, you know, my job with Smiteworks to to do the their Twitter account, I would not have social media of any kind. I just would 
disappear from it because for the most part, I mean, it's really good for like advertising your, your wares like we do, but it's a, it's, it's just a, it's just a, an American social nightmare to be on Twitter and have any type of conversation about any subject with any other people. Like it's just a nightmare. Everybody knows it. So yes, congratulations on not having any of that. (laughs) So, (laughs) um, all right, Fury. Any any final words from you, Madame? Um, riffs don't look like vaginas. I don't know. <laughs> Say that again. I didn't. I didn't understand. I didn't hear it. Yeah, uh, mm, no, I, I said it once. I'm not saying it. Again. Okay, I, I missed the joke. Everybody, <laughs> I'm gonna have to track her down later and ask her what she said. Um, all right. So thanks everybody for watching. Again, if you would like to hang around, we're going to stop the stream. And then we'll come back in about five minutes or so and get the Jackbox games going. And for those of you that have maybe you're watching the show for the first time, we can literally play with 10,000 players. So every single person watching right now can be involved if you want to uh, or if you just want to watch and hang out. That's fun, too. So uh, thanks, everybody. And we will see you back here in a few minutes. Good gaming, everyone.